You are now listening to the Visit El Paso podcast, official podcast of Destination El Paso. I'm your host, Christy Couture, and this is episode 16 for October 2014. Hey, welcome back to our podcast. In this episode, we interview Ben Fife, Cultural Program Supervisor for the El Paso Museums and Cultural Affairs Department, and I'll also give you some of Visit El Paso's top event recommendations for October, and then finish off with a little bit of local music from the Chuco Soul Project. A lot happened in September. The first ever Beats and Eats Festival, UTEP's first night run, the Glory Road Glow Run, the Monster Truck Arena Cross at Cohen Stadium, and so much more. We talked about all of those events in the last episode of the Visit El Paso podcast. And that's the goal of our show, to tell you what El Paso has to offer and how you can experience some real adventure in the Sun City. Make sure to subscribe to our show on SoundCloud, iTunes, or Stitcher Radio. We've been added to the Real Podcast Network so you can catch the stream every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. So moving along to this month's interviewee, Ben Fife. He's the absolute authority on all of the public art projects going on in El Paso right now, including the Downtown Arts District, the Downtown Farmers Market, and of course, Chalk the Block. If you've never heard of Chalk the Block before, this year is a perfect opportunity to catch the fun and see what all the buzz is about. Let's go ahead and talk to Ben about what kinds of cool installations you'll find this year at the festival. Hi, I'm Ben Fife, the Cultural Program Supervisor for the City of El Paso Museums and Cultural Affairs Department. Uh, the Museums and Cultural Affairs Department and a dedicated committee of private sector individuals are here to actually bring Chalk the Block to El Paso every October. Chalk the Block is a really special event and it's quickly becoming an El Paso signature festival and it brings a whole lot of people into the city. On average, it brings about 30,000 or more folks into the, into the city annually, right? Right, actually it brings about 38,000 people to downtown El Paso every October. Um, we're really proud of that growth. It mm -hmm. has increased every year. Um, we started out uh, seven years ago with a one-day festival that drew about 5,000 people, involved about maybe 10 artists. Last year, we involved over 200 artists and drew 38,000 people to downtown. Uh, so to say that this event has grown quickly is quite an understatement. No kidding, and now you're in your seventh year. Maybe tell us some of the big installations that you're expecting to come into the city? Sure, absolutely. I think one of the things that has really made this event so special over the years is that we really get excited about bringing different types of art to El Paso. So. Even though the start of the festival was really about that chalk art, which mm -hmm. people still love, people get really excited about, we also are bringing large-scale installations to El Paso, um, installations from across the world. We compete with other cities in the world to bring these things here. We have pop-up galleries, we have performances, mm -hmm. you know, great live music. Um, so it, it's really a lot of things going on. This year, we're really excited. We have a large-scale commission, uh, meaning we actually have um, had something specifically created for Chalk the Block. We do that uh, periodically throughout the years. This is the largest, though, that we've ever done. Oh. And that is um, a piece called Porous Prism mm -hmm. by an artist from Romania named Ioana Irma. Um, she works out of California now, but this is basically going to be a large art maze uh, that'll take up Cleveland Square Park, and we're really excited about it. Wow, that's beautiful. And folks can go online to chalktheblock.com, right, to take a look at the installation. Yeah, absolutely. They can take a look and see, at, they can see all of the things that are available at the event. Um, our Facebook page is also a great resource. Mm -hmm. It's probably a little too active, <laughs> um, but we get really excited about about all the stuff happening. Uh, another thing we're bringing this year is uh, a piece by an artist named Yaro Mazzetti out of New York. Um, and the piece is called Lady Buggies. They're actually 
uh, ladybug carts that are going to be roaming around the Arts District. People can hop on board and get a ride to all the pop-up galleries throughout the fest. And while they're on there, they can actually charge their phones, which is great. And I think you probably better than anybody else know how important that is <laughs> Very. when you're at an event. Um, so they're going to be really fun. One of the great things about these is they were a huge hit at Art Basel Miami last year, which mm -hmm. is one of the premier arts festivals in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, it's always great to know that we're bringing high quality uh, art, really engaging and interactive. Um, that people would ordinarily have to travel far outside of this community and we're able to bring it to them, which is great. And that's what's really great about Chalk the Block is that it's an approachable event. Even though it's very contemporary, it's got a lot of very interesting art. Um, anyone from a serious art collector to a four-year-old can, can find something that they enjoy at Chalk the Block. Absolutely. I think one of the things that I personally am most proud of about this event um, is when I hear people articulate what you just said. Um, you know, working in the arts now for uh, almost two decades, you know, there are a lot of perceptions about what an art event is. And, you know, sometimes there's perceptions about the type of person you need to be to be able to enjoy art. I, you know, I'm not educated. I might not get that. Or I don't know how to behave in a museum or I don't have the right clothes to go into a museum. All of that's sort of gone at Chalk the Block. And you get really serious, hardcore art people that you ordinarily would see at museum openings. Mm -hmm. And you also get families who've just driven in and they are there to grab some great food at the food trucks mm -hmm. uh, and have fun with the kids. And all of them leave happy. I think everybody got what they wanted out of the event. Um, and I like to think that this event is also sort of a gateway to becoming a huge art supporter for those people who ordinarily don't think about themselves as such. I think one project that people are going to get really excited about this year is one that we have tried for a few years now to bring. Uh, and this year, everything sort of lined up. Uh, it's called the Texas Size Print Project. Mm -hmm. And that is actually a collaboration between some amazing artists out of San Antonio and some local artists here in El Paso out of Calavera Studios. What this will do is actually create large-scale printing. Um, the prints are so large you actually use a steamroller to roll out the prints and people will be able to see the artists working doing these large-scale prints uh, as they sort of roll out on the street. Um, so it's just really fun to watch and it's great to be able to see that printmaking process. And I think everybody gets excited anytime they see steamrollers <laughs> working. Oh yeah, especially for something that large. Uh, what is going to happen to those prints after they're done with them? You know, actually they're going to be, uh, the prints will have to air out actually so that they can dry and then they will be available for sale. The artists are doing that to help raise uh, funds. One of the great things about Chalk the Block is we really like for artists to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Artists are an important part of our community and they, they need to make livings too. Mm -hmm. um, one of the great things about our event is people really support those artists. Um, our artist vendors do so well at Chalk the Block. Last year we had one vendor who cleared $10,000 in oh two days. Wow. Um, and when you think about you know uh, being a working artist, not having a gallery system, uh, in place that would probably be as large as other cities our size might mm -hmm. have. These events are really important for helping to support those artists. Agreed, agreed. Now you're going to show me something about the Octopied Building, right? Octopied Building. This is <laughs> this is a really cool installation <laughs> that will be coming to El Paso. It's courtesy of a UK street artist named The Filthy Lucre. Mm. Um, it is an inflatable installation. I think the only way to really describe this is it looks like a giant octopus is sort of spilling out of a building. So we are excited about this. It's a crazy cool piece just to encounter. And I think it's one of those one of those really great pieces that works once again for everybody. I think a three year old kid gets excited about seeing this <laughs> and a really jaded, <laughs> jaded art fan will get excited about this and everybody in between. I agree. And then bringing it downtown is also another interesting choice. I think uh, in my own opinion, uh, I think downtown is one of the most uh, beautiful places in El Paso when it comes to art. There's so many murals in this particular neighborhood. And so having Chalk the Block downtown just really kind of fortifies that. Absolutely. I think, um, I, I think El Paso is, is really lucky that we have, we have incredible art all over this community. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you're absolutely right. Downtown is really special. 
um, you know, the incredibly rich architectural heritage of downtown, you know, our beautiful museums, our state designated arts district, um, you know, downtown has a lot going for it. And I think Chalk the Block is the best possible way to experience our downtown when it's sort of been taken over by a bunch of crazy artists <laughs> and there's a lot to do um, and it's just a really fun family event and once again free um, you know there's absolutely no excuse not to take advantage of this event you know this year we, we we've partnered with Fort Bliss uh, Directorate of Family Morale Welfare and Recreation mm -hmm. for the third year in a row they shuttle military families from base on Saturday to downtown El Paso. What I love seeing is a lot of these families, it's the first time they've left base and we are showing them our city at the best possible time. Mm -hmm. What's great is the next day when there's not free shuttle from base, we still see a lot of military families. Mm -hmm. You ask them, you know, how they got here, how they found out about the event. What they always tell us is their friends came back the day before, told them how incredible it was and they had to get out here. The reason it's so popular is because the whole family can get involved. For a lot of festivals that come through town, even though they're huge, they're popular, they're for a certain demographic. And because art really connects to all generations. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, that's something we've, we've worked really hard on and I, I, I'm very proud of, is that throughout the years, we want to make sure that, you know, this is an event, you know, for really little kids, for young families. Um, for grandparents, for young people in college. Everybody can come to this event. Everybody's going to have a great time and get what they wanted out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's no easy feat to balance all of those expectations and what's appropriate for everybody. Um, and still, I, I think for lack of a better word, be cool. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we've done a great job uh, great job doing that. So thank you so much for, for articulating that. Oh, yes, of course. And I, I suppose as a final note, for someone who's coming to the festival for the first time, uh, what would you suggest that they, they bring? Can they bring, you know, foldable chairs, uh, you know, water bottles, things like that, or is that not allowed? Absolutely. You know, um, I, that's a great question. I think because, once again, this is open, this is free, we want as many people to come and be comfortable as possible. They can bring those folding chairs. They can bring water. They can, you know, families can actually bring lunch and picnic if they want to. Mm -hmm. They can also take advantage of some incredible food trucks and lots of things that are available. Mm -hmm. um, actually, staff jokes that we do this event solely for the food trucks so that we can <laughs> we can get these incredible food trucks uh, for this event. So, you know, people can sort of bring what they want to. Um, I think, you know, there's lots of great parking options downtown, and I think the downtown management district has done an incredible job of making it really easy for people to go online and find a parking guide. Mm -hmm. um, and we look forward to seeing them. Well, thank you very much for joining us today and, and telling our audience about Chalk the Block. It's going to be another great year, and we can't wait for year seven to start. Absolutely. We'll mm -hmm. see you there. Like Ben said, you can check out previews to the great exhibits at Chalk the Block by liking them on Facebook and by going to their website, chalktheblock.com. We really want to see all of you out there, so remember that this event is completely free. Bring a picnic or explore the different flavors offered by the wide range of food trucks. There's sure to be something for every preference. And while you're out there, make sure to use the hashtag ItsAllGoodEP or CTB2014 to add your memories to the social media collective. It's All Good is an El Paso state of mind. It's the true pulse of this community, and it's El Pasoans taking an active role in social media to encourage positive conversation about the Sun City. Here's a way for you to get involved and help share digital goodwill about El Paso. Join the El Paso It's All Good movement by signing up at itsallgoodep.com with your Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn accounts and help spread digital goodwill about the Sun City. After that, simply post content using hashtag itsallgoodep and you could be entered to win monthly prizes. Remember, the El Paso It's All Good movement isn't just about social media. It's also a state of mind, a message about all positive things that we can get excited about in our community. It's a great way to say, I love where I live. Do you have a business? Get your employees involved. We can come to your corporate meetings. Get your team signed up and hand out free It's All Good EP swag. Just let us know. Call us at 915-534-0600 or email us at socialmedia at destinationalpaso.com. 
The It's All Good EP movement has really taken off since it started last year. Just in September alone, our digital ambassadors have been spreading the good news about El Paso, such as the National Endowment for the Arts featuring El Paso's current construction on our artistic pedestrian pathway, El Paso's delicious Mexican eatery making the finals for being one of America's best burritos, Butterfield Trail Golf Club making one of Lynx Magazine's top 10 courses in the nation, and El Paso Community College being named one of 10 finalists for the Aspen Prize, the nation's preeminent recognition of high achievement and performing in America's community colleges. So you see, there's a lot to celebrate. Check out itsallgoodep.com to see more stories like this and to discover thousands of photos taken with the It's All Good EP hashtag. Are you a fan of sports, both national and local? Well, be sure to tune in Sundays at riosradio.com live at 5 for your weekly dose of sports talk with the guys. Or catch the replay on iTunes at Stitcher by searching Rio Sports. And you can catch all of this only on... Rios Radio, El Paso's newest source for music, sports, news, and entertainment. Okay, so here's our top picks for things to do in El Paso this month. And in between these events, there's hundreds of more ideas. Just go online to visitelpaso.com and elpasolive.com. For more than 20 years, Celebration of Our Mountains has included hiking, biking, birding, climbing, geocaching, and celebrating the national wonders of the borderland. There's 18 events in October alone. You can check out a full lineup of the 2014 events by going to celebrationofourmountains.org. Jam Theatricals and El Paso Live's 11th Annual Broadway Series opens with the return of the Blue Man Group with their wildly popular theatrical show at 7.30 p.m. October 7th and 8th at the Plaza Theater. Blue Man Group's performances combine comedy, music, and technology to produce a totally unique form of entertainment. Ticket information by calling 915-231-1111 or alpasolive.com forward slash Broadway. Our featured October event, Chalk the Block, is on October 10th through 12th throughout downtown El Paso. The event includes various art projects, art vendors, live music, performance art, interactive kids zone, food, and refreshments. Hours are 6 to 10 p.m. Friday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Saturday, and 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Sunday. Featured artists this year include Simi Alvarado with Texas Size Print 11, Filthy Luckers Octopied Building, Iona Irma's Porous Prism, Rob and Patty Lord's Billion Jelly Bloom, Odd Lab Fire Dancers, and Yarrow Mazzetti's Lady Buggies. Former El Paso band The Dirty River Boys headline Bliss, Brews, and Q's Sunday show for the second annual Kansas City Barbecue Society sanctioned cook-off, which is happening Friday and Saturday, October 10th and 11th at Freedom Crossing, 1611 Han on Fort Bliss. The event includes barbecue, music, beer, arts, and crafts. Admission is free and the public is always welcome. More information by calling 915-564-5311 or by visiting blissbrewsandq.com. The El Paso Rhinos, El Paso's Junior League ice hockey team, plays home games at the Sierra Providence Event Center right next to the Coliseum on 4100 East Paisano. Regular game time is 7.30 p.m. Friday and Saturday and 4.30 p.m. on Sundays. Ticket information by calling 915-479-7825 or by going online to elpasorhinos.com. Now this month's home games are October 10th through 12th and they'll be playing against the Wichita Thunder. October 17th through 19th where they'll be playing the Dallas Snipers. And finally, October 24th through 26th where they'll be playing the Texas Attack. 
The 8th annual Robert Benaventure presents Boo at the Zoo is at the El Paso Zoo, 4001 East Baisano, and it's a safe trick-or-treating event for families with children ages 2 to 12 from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday, October 25th through 26th. Admission is $10, $6 for ages 3 through 12, and $7.50 for ages 60 and older and active duty military with ID. The event is free for Zoological Society members and ages 2 and younger. You can get more information about Boo at the Zoo by calling 915-521-1850 or by going online to elpasozoo.org. History, legends, and lore come to life in downtown El Paso. Ghosts 915 Paranormal Research Center at 108 East San Antonio is a paranormal museum, art gallery, and historic landmark. We offer history and ghost tours, workshops, and come see our haunted collection. That's the Ghost 915 Paranormal Research Center in downtown El Paso. Call 915-274-9531 or visit our website at ghosts915.com. These are just a few of the can't-miss events for the month, but there's so much more to see and do. So make sure you stop by any of our visitor information centers in downtown El Paso, Fort Bliss, or the El Paso International Airport. As a bonus, we've got a really special pop-up gallery at our downtown visitor center located on 400 West San Antonio, and it features Augment El Paso, an augmented reality showcase that brings exhibit art to life. Come prepared by downloading the Augment El Paso application on your iPhone or iPad, or just ask one of our friendly visitor information specialists to borrow an iPad to get fully immersed in the exhibit. You are now listening to the official Visit El Paso podcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Visit El Paso TX. Check us out online, www.visitelpaso.com. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast on SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, iTunes, and even YouTube. In every episode, I spotlight some local music for you to discover. And this month, the featured band is Chuko Soul Project, who will be performing live during the Chalk the Block Festival. The name of this track is called Sitting Alone, and you can listen to this and other tracks by the Chuko Soul Project on Facebook and on Reverb Nation. Let us know what you think. Till next time, enjoy.
take my pick and take myself on the doors of my dreams. Oh. 